Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim and today we are going to talk specifically about using the new Tetrix DC motor and servo expansion boxes with a different platform, in this case the EV3. You want to kind of detail exactly how that works. So you can see I've got a robot right here and we've talked about our expansion boxes before and the fact that they're plug and play and the fact that I can use because of this expansion style data cable that is the same as an EV3 and the fact that we've created programming blocks to go with those, I can use those with my Lego controller, EV3, not the old one, but the EV3, with my Tetrix build. And this is a little bit of a special build in the fact that I've used both Max channel pieces and also Prime pieces scattered throughout there. So just to kind of give you an idea, that this is going to work completely within the Tetrix ecosystem. It doesn't matter if it's Max or it's Prime, it's all meant to work together. And when we add the EV3 and LEGO component that it's compatible with, it really makes a lot of opportunity for options of building different types of robots. So let's start with where we get the resources we need for these expansion boxes to be able to use them with the LEGO controller. So we're going to go to our website, pitsco.com. And then when you go to the website, you can go to the specific product page. And you can see right here that I've started with my DC motor expansion box. Uh, I can search for expansion and it would bring it right up. I can scroll down to downloads and it'll show you everything that I need, including help files and the blocks that you need to go ahead and download for the EV3 software. So everything that you need is right there and including technical guide, all of the things that you need. Down below, related products. So if you need additional Tornado motors, you need power pole connectors, if you need the servo controller, it's all right down there. So that's where we're going to start. Once we download what we need, we can go then to our EV3 software. And again, we put a lot of effort into making these look very similar and give you that very uh, intuitive feel in using them in your program. Just like you would any other program in the EV3, you have in your action palette, once you download the blocks, a programming block for the DC motor. It's got all the familiar look and feel of the regular EV3 blocks, and then also a servo controller. Again, the idea is that we wanted this to look as intuitive as it could be so that you're not out of your comfort level. This, we didn't want this to be a stumbling block in, in you using this software with our hardware and creating those bigger, more exciting robots. So. That's gonna be just like you would program any other EV3 program once you do that, using the blocks just in place of the Lego Lego block. So let's give you an idea of what that kind of looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down, put this to the side, bring my Lego over here. Uh, let's hope, let's, before I do that, let me talk about some of the things that you need to, to consider when you're using this with the Lego controller, because there are some things that you need to be aware of. Number one, because I've got a separate power source with my robot, I'm using the 12 volt DC power supply with Tetrix for these bigger motors and the servos. That means these boxes are on a separate power source. That impacts you in a couple ways. Number one, you need to remember that there's um, a potential pitfall if you don't um, power up correctly. And what I mean, it could be as simple as that if I forget to turn my Tetrix robot on, it's not like a Lego controller. I could run my program and if this is not powered on, it's not gonna do anything. So you need to remember that, number one, you need to turn the power on on both devices. The second thing to remember is that there's a little bit of a sequence there. If you don't do it in the right sequence, you could have a little bit of an issue. It's an easy one to fix, but you could have an issue. For instance, if I power on my Lego brick first, which is kind of a natural tendency, then I power on my Tetrix components, because the Lego brick has a smart ID feature in the fact that it, it knows what sensors that are connected to it. If these are not powered on first, when the EV3 powers on, then it actually IDs that into the sensor port in a different manner. It won't recognize it correctly. So the fix for that is either power on the Tetrix motors first, then power on the Lego connector, or if you do it the opposite way around, you can simply pull the data cable from the sensor port, power on your Tetrix, once it's powered up, then go ahead and plug it in. That way the Lego controller will ID it correctly. So the other thing to keep in mind that potentially could be a problem is if you've written a program, for whatever reason, you kind of abort it in the middle, because these are on a different power source, they're gonna remember the last command that they were given. So if the program stops, 
and you didn't give the Tetrix motors a stop command, abort your program, your robot could still keep going. So remember that there's some small uh, types of things that you need to kind of just keep in mind that when you're programming with this, there are some things you need to do. So let's have enough talking. Let's go ahead and show you what that actually looks like. I've got a simple line here across my table. I'm going to start my program and basically what it's going to do, going to go through a little warm up routine. It's going to make sure everything is functioning like it should. It's going to try and move to the line, find it, do a right turn and then follow it until I give it an obstacle to be in the way. So let me see if I can get this to work. I'm going to turn my on. I'm going to go through my warm up routine. I'm going to check all the functions of my arm and my gripper, make sure that things are working correctly. I'm going to lower that back out of the way. Everything's working. I'm going to move forward. Oh, found my line. I'm going to turn so I can follow that line. Now, it should keep following a line until it sees an obstacle. So if I put my hand in the way, saw the uh, obstacle, and then stop. So let me go ahead and make sure I emphasize this, the fact that now we've got brand new programming blocks that we made for uh, the expansion boxes. And we had some old ones so that if you were using Lego controllers with the old expansion boxes in Tetrix, you need to make sure that you remove the old blocks from your EV3 program, download the new ones, which you can again find on the product page at the website for these brand new boxes and then make sure that you have just the new blocks in your program. That way everything will work like it's supposed to. So I hope you found that inspirational and maybe uh, gave you some ideas for some of your creations to make them bigger, better, and more exciting. So like we always say, have fun, build some robots, and come back and see us.